Imagine that you want to deploy a containerized database inside Kubernetes. For that, you need to use persistent storage. When it comes to the storage, your company's infrastructure team provides different storage solutions from block, NAS, object storage, Google Cloud Disks, AWS Disks, and more. So to make it easy, there need to be a consistent way to deal with all these storage types. And what is a Kubernetes solutions for it? Hello and welcome to Persistence Volumes. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. In next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is a persistent volumes and how to create and manage different storage types in Kubernetes. But before watching this video, it is required to have a basic understanding of what are volumes, what are volume types such as empty dir, host path. In case if you need a help with that, please do check links to those videos in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. This is completely concept based video of persistent volumes. In this, first we'll discuss about why we need persistent volumes. Then we'll discuss about what is persistent volume and persistent volume claim. After that, We'll discuss about the life cycle of a persistent volume. Then we'll discuss about the two different ways we can provision a persistent volume. And finally, we'll discuss about the high level overview of two types of provisioning a persistent volume, which are static PV and dynamic PV. So that's about the objectives of this video. And now let's get started with why we need persistent volumes. The rationale of using persistent volumes resource in Kubernetes is quite simple. As you can see, there are different storage infrastructures such as Amazon EBS, GCE Persistent Disk, or Gluster GFS. We use these different storage types for different purposes based on the data we are storing on it and the way we access it. These storage types typically fall under block, NFS, object, or other storage type categories. So each of them has a different architecture and different API. Problem here is, if you were to attach and manage these diverse storage types manually, we would have to develop custom plugins to interact with external drives APIs, such as mounting the disk, requesting the capacity, and managing disk lifecycle, and etc. So we would also need to configure a cloud storage environment. So all of which would result in unnecessary overhead. So we need one storage interface for all durable storage options. And the Kubernetes solutions for this is persistent volumes. Fortunately, Kubernetes platform simplifies storage management for you. Persistent volume subsystem provides a standard API for developers and administrators that abstract the details of how storage is provided from how it is consumed. So that it will let developers and administrators to focus on storage capacity and storage types their applications will consume rather than each and every detail of storage providers API. To do this, Kubernetes has introduced two new API objects. First, persistence volume. The second one is persistence volume claim. And let's see what these are. First, persistence volumes. A persistence volume is a piece of pre-provisioned storage inside the cluster. In short, these are called as PV. This is typically provisioned by an administrator. As its name says, these volumes are persistent, meaning the data inside these volumes can exist beyond the lifecycle of an individual pod that uses this PV. At a very high level, persistence volume is a piece of pre-provisioned storage inside Kubernetes cluster. Second, we have a persistence volume claim. A persistence volume claim is a storage request by a user. Typically, this user is a developer. In short, persistence volume is called as PVC. So developer requests for storage of some capacity. 
along with some access modes such as read write or read only so to better understand let's look at how traditional storage request process works if you have ever worked on managing backend storage as a storage admin or an operating system admin or even developing an application then you should see some familiarity with traditional workflow in enterprises where you have a storage admin creates this chunks of storage pieces which are called as lunts then developer request these storage lunts to mount on the operating system after that application team stores the application related data inside these storage lunts so that's about the traditional workflow so kubernetes is highly aligned with traditional workflow here persistence volume is a storage piece and persistence volume claim is a request for storage piece i hope it is clear now and now let's take a look at the life cycle of a persistence volume first step in the life cycle of persistence volume is provisioning in this stage typically administrator creates the storage volumes these volumes can be any storage type such as block nfs or distributed so in kubernetes terminologies these volumes are called as persistence volumes in short pv so there are two ways these pvs can be provisioned one is statistically and other is dynamically we'll discuss in detail about this in next slide so once the storage is provisioned next step in the process is binding in the binding stage we bind the storage request to the persistence volume that was provisioned earlier stage this storage request in kubernetes is called as persistence volume claim in short pvc so typically developer creates this persistence volume claim to request the specific amount of storage and access modes so as soon as the persistence volume claim is created a control loop on kubernetes master watches for any new persistence volume claims and binds the matching pv if it's available in that pool some of you might have a question here what if we don't find a match between our requested storage and available storage in the pool we'll see the two scenarios here first let's imagine that we have requested 100 gig storage but the available storage chunks in that storage pool is only 50 then kubernetes doesn't find any pvs that match to our request then in that case persistence volume claim request will wait at least 100 gig persistent volume is created and added to the pool in another scenario let's imagine that you have requested 10 gig storage but the available storage pieces inside the pool is 12 gig in this case persistence volume claim will bound to the 12 gig pv because the user will always get at least what they ask for but the volume may be in excess of what was requested but the excess should not be too much point here is it's okay to be a bit excess but not the double so this is what happens when the sizes doesn't match exactly so in short in binding stage kubernetes binds user request with available storage in the pool once this binding process is completed next step is to developers use this claim inside the pod as a volume so once you submit the pod config to the kubernetes api on the kubernetes master then kubernetes api inspects the persistence volume claim is bounded to the persistent volume or not if it's bounded then kubernetes creates the pod and the application team can start using the volume inside the pod final step here is reclaiming the storage when a user is done with their volume they can delete the persistence volume claim from the kubernetes which allows the reclaiming of the resources currently kubernetes supports multiple ways when the volume is reclaimed volume can be recycled retained or deleted so that's about the reclaiming process so to recap everything here in provisioning stage typically administrator creates a storage chunks which is called as persistence volumes then developer request for the storage request using the persistence volume claim once the storage request finds the suitable size of a persistence volume then it gets bounded after that developer can use this volume inside the pod 
to more the volumes and one point and use it. And finally, when a user is done with their volume, they can delete the persistence volume claim objects from the Kubernetes, so which allows the reclaiming the resources. That's about the life cycle of persistence volumes. And now there is something that we need to discuss in detail is provisioning. As discussed in the previous slide, there are two ways to provision storage volumes inside Kubernetes. They are static and dynamic. They are not complement to one another. You can use both together at the same time. The major difference between them is when using static provisioning, typically administrator need to create the persistence volume before developer requests the storage using PVC. And whereas in dynamic, when developer creates a storage request, it simultaneously provisions the PV and binds it together. So for this to happen, we need to configure the default storage class inside Kubernetes. So to explain this better, let's take a look at this complete process flow right now. First, let's provision the static PV. Let's imagine that you have a storage infrastructure with different types of storage such as fast speed SSDs, slow speed hard disks, NFS, and then the object storage. So the first thing in this process is to create the persistence volumes, which is done by the administrator. In this example, admin has created the storage chunks of different capacity. The storage chunks are called as persistence volumes. So as and when needed, developer can create the persistence volume claim or simply the PVC to request the storage from this pool. Let's say for example, Developer has requested for the storage of 2 gig of fast speed SSD storage by creating the PVC. Then this PVC claim gets bounded to the 2 gig PV. Now developer can make use of bounded PVC inside the pod. But there is one problem with it. What if the size of requested storage doesn't match with one of the storage chunks which are available inside the pool? Unfortunately, developer has to wait till admin to create the right size what developer needs it. And that is when dynamic PV comes into the picture. And let's see how it is done in next slide. Now let's see how we can provision storage chunks dynamically. Similar to static provisioning, let's imagine that you have a storage infrastructure with different types of storages such as fast speed SSDs, slow speed hard disks, and distributed cluster storage. So here in dynamic provisioning, we don't create PVs manually. Instead, we create the storage classes. These storage classes are generally created depending upon the type of medium in the backend. For example, as you can see, we have created storage class of fast for SSD drives, slow storage class for hard disks, and distributed for cluster FS and similarly like others. These storage classes are created and configured by admin. And this is a one-time setup, not like creating individual PVs manually all the time. Important point to note here is, admin will have to configure the default storage class before we do anything. This comes useful when developer doesn't mention storage class inside the PVC config. So in that case, it automatically provisions storage from the default storage class. So beauty of this is now developer doesn't have to worry about the correct storage size is available inside the storage pool or not. All he has to make sure is whether the request storage class is there or not. Once that is confirmed, developer can create the PVC and which in turn creates a storage respective PV and gets bounded. So once PVC is bounded to PV, you know the next step, and that is to make use of this claim inside the pod. So that's about the dynamic PV. Our next thing to do here in this module is creating the static and dynamic PV. We'll look at this in separate videos. Before you move on to the next video, let's recap what we have learned in this video so far. Coming to the summary, first we discussed about the reasons why we need persistent volumes. As we discussed, we have a multiple storage types in the backend. Kubernetes has a plugin for each of them, but each of them has a different architecture and API. 
it is really tough to deal with these storage plugins individually. And what we need here is one storage interface to deal with these different types of persistent storage solutions. To address that, Kubernetes has created two new objects. They are persistence volume and persistence volume claim. So next, we discuss about what is this persistence volume and persistence volume claim. So the persistence volume is a pre-provisioned storage inside Kubernetes. Typically, administrator creates this persistence volume. They are nothing but a storage chunk. Next, the persistence volume claim. In short, it is called as PVC. So PVC is a request for the storage. It is typically created by developers. So when new PVC is created, it looks for the PV that matches to the size. So once it is found, it gets bounded. So that's about the PV and PVC. Next, we discussed about the PV lifecycle. It starts with creating persistence volume. Then we create the persistence volume claim to bind PVC with PV. Once it is bound, then we'll make use of the volume inside the pod. And finally, when a user is done with their volume, they can delete the persistence volume claim objects from Kubernetes, which allows you the reclaiming the resources. And finally, we discussed about two different types of provisioning volumes in Kubernetes. They are static and dynamic. The primary difference between them is, in static provisioning, we need to have a persistence volume to be created before the persistence volume claim. Whereas in dynamic, persistence volumes are created simultaneously when persistence volumes are created. This comes to the end of this video. And now it is time to discuss about the next topic, which is static provisioning of persistence volume. In that video, we'll discuss about what is static provisioning of persistence volume, how it is created and the complete demo of it. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.